Alright, today I'm going to show you how to bake a material into a render target. This is useful if you have a very complicated material that you're trying to optimize for real-time performance, or if you have multiple textures, I'm going to show you how to take multiple grayscale images and bake them into a single texture file um, by um, storing them in the RGB channels of a texture. So just a real quick demonstration. Um, this noise texture was generated um, just by using the um, Vernoy noise node and you can copy those that down if you'd like. And all I did was I took the noise material and I take a render target and um, that render target the data is filled in with information from that material and I can create a static texture from that. And then if I right click on that, create material, I can now use this as if it was a texture file and use it in my game. Um, and in this case, I used it to make this energy shield, which um, if you look at just the instruction count for uh, this material, for some reason it's at like 600 instructions for the base pass. So. Um, you wouldn't really want this to be used for real time. Um, so, I'm also going to show you how, you probably already mentioned it, but I'll show you how to store information in the RGB channels. So, if I take a static texture from this, and um, so as you can see here, I have different noise that is now stored in the RGB channel which um, formerly it was not like that. So um, let's go ahead and get started. Um, it's actually pretty simple to set up. We're going to start by deleting this here and making a new blueprint class. We'll make it an actor and name it BP underscore Baker. Open that up by double clicking I'm going to close a few of these tabs just to get them out of the way. All right. And if we go into the event graph, we'll go ahead and delete all of these nodes. And we'll right click and search for custom event. Add custom event. And we'll call that event bake. And we want to search for uh, draw material to render target. And so what this node is going to do is it's going to take information from material and it's going to imprint that information into a render target. So we'll make two variables. We'll go ahead and drag out from the material input and um, a drop down menu will appear and you can promote to variable. We'll call this variable material. And likewise for the render target, we'll promote that to a variable and we'll call that render target. All right. Now we also want um, every time before um, new information is added to a render target, we want to make sure that there is no data currently occupying the render target. So to do that, we'll just search for clear render target and that'll replace any data with the uh, with whatever color you select here um, in this case it's just zero 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 and we'll for the render target we'll use the same variable all right so that's everything for the event graph and go ahead and move to the construction script so we only need a couple of nodes here first we need a uh, we need to call the event that we just made here. We need to call the bake. So search for bake. And so anytime the construction script is ran, um, bake will be called. And the construction script is going to run, be run anytime, um, anytime something has changed about the actor, basic, pretty much. Um, so we can, I'll show you in a little bit. So. Um, we're going to go ahead and drag out and make a branch node. And because we don't necessarily want the uh, 
bake to be happening all the time even when we're not really using um, the bake function we're going to want to create a branch and just like before we'll promote this input to a variable and we'll name this variable allow bake and I'll just give us a little bit of control over what's going on um, and we'll make all of these variables public by clicking over here in the variables uh, menu and we'll compile and close that down and so now if we drag this into our scene we're going to see that we have a material and a render target and an allow bake now if we did not um, make those variables public so for example if I remove this allow bake file come back here you can see that option is gone so we definitely need to make sure those are public alright so I'm not going to allow bake right offhand um, so we'll go ahead and we'll make a render target now a render target is basically just an image file um, it's kind of a special image file but it's just an image file uh, we'll go ahead and right click go to materials and textures and get your render target 2D and what we'll do is we'll just uh, drag that render target 2D into here normally what I'm going to do is I'm going to open these up and you see it has a size X and a size Y and this is going to be um, the size of the image file that you're making so if you want a higher resolution image um, then you can go to like a 512 by 512 or higher if you want I think there's probably a limit at some point but um, you can play around with that you can get pretty good size render targets so um, so normally what I'll do is I'll make like a 512 by 512 and then I'll make a 1024 by 1024 and a 256 by 256 and then I'll just shuffle them in as needed um, so now that we got our render target set up we'll go ahead and right click and we'll create a new material we'll call this M underscore Oh, uh, what will we call it? Uh, gradient. So, let's say that I click U and use the shortcut to get our texture coordinate. And then we mask out the texture coordinate. And let's say I just want the red channel. So let's say that I want this data to be stored into a texture file for some reason. So I can just go ahead and connect it to the emissive color. Um, so the render target is really just pulling from the emissive color as far as I've been able to tell so far. Um, so you'll just want to make sure that uh, any data that you want fed into your render target is going through this input, the emissive color. Um, so if we give take a real quick look at the plane preview um, plane mesh preview that's pretty much what it's going to look like we'll go ahead and save the uh, texture come back in here if we dot, drop the material into the uh, material slot here and we allow bake um, as soon as we clicked allow bake it ran the construction script the construction script called the event and the event baked the data from this material into the render target. Now if we um, look at this render target and turn off the alpha channel we can see that we have all this data and we can right click and create a static texture and we can then use this static texture as we, choose, as we see fit in our game. Um, so this is really useful if you're playing around with uh, really complicated materials and you're just trying to simplify things. So, what we'll do now is I'll show you how to bake multiple um, multiple grayscale images into a texture file. So, I'll go ahead and open my gradient back up. I'm sorry if I'm kind of jumping around a little bit here. All right, so we'll make another mask and go ahead and do that. And let's see, what should we do? A radial gradient. How about that? So the radial gradient, if I just go ahead and do a quick preview, start preview mode. 
So that's just going to give me a circle. So what I'll do in order to store all of this into a single image is I will use the append node and I'm going to append um, the these two channels and we don't need the red channel and if you wanted to you could swap these doesn't really matter if you wanted something like an inverted texture coordinate base then that's what you would get um, and then we'll use another append node and that's going to turn it into a vector 3 so this can go into our missive color stop the preview we'll save it and so now whenever we um, run the construction script here it's going to bake all three um, it's going to bake the vector 3 into our texture or into our uh, render target we can create a static texture and now if we go ahead and choose default compression settings compress without alpha and so now we can isolate each channel and use them as we see fit all right so uh that about covers it. I hope you guys learned something useful and have a great evening.